Why would anyone want to shoot at black polka dots? Bullseye targets have no tactical value. These are the typical excuses given by people who try to downplay the value of conventional competition shooting. The fact is, conventional shooting is the history of marksmanship. The first efforts to formally train people on how to shoot a rifle or other firearm started with conventional shooting, i.e. bullseye shooting. Let's take a look at some of the values a bullseye target still gives us today. Well, in the first place, marksmanship effectively means shooting at the mark. In days of old, that would imply a painted target or something very elaborate. And there were various attempts at scoring systems like string measure. None of these were very easy or clean. Some genius came up with the idea of, well, seeing as we're just trying to hit the mark, i.e. the center of something, the closer you get to the center, the more value you should get. If we just make that center point surrounded by a black circle, it's an easy reference to make. It doesn't matter which direction your shot error takes you. The further away you get from center, the further away from the mark, the less value that gets. Another advantage with bullseye targets is a bullseye target is always right side up. If we take a look at this black circle and we turn it in some direction, it gives the shooter the same exact reference and the distances from center are always the same. So in terms of marksmanship exercise, bullseye is really the purest form of testing a shooter's ability. Okay, well that's all well and good as far as testing shooting ability. What value does it give to someone, say, in the military or in law enforcement environment? Let's take a look at some targets. The first one on my right, your left, is the SR target. It stands for short range. It's shot at 200 yards. The target size on all bullseye targets typically equate to the approximate width of your front sight at that respective distance. For example, a rifle front sight is generally about six or seven minutes in width. If we look at this SR target here, that bull, the black circle, is about 13 inches wide. At 200 yards, that's 6.5 minutes of angle, about the same width of your front sight at that distance. If we take a look at this target on my left, your right, that's an SR3 target shot at 300 yards. Once again, that target is going to be about 6 minutes wide. It's an 18-inch bull at, 18, it's at 300 yards, that's 6 minutes again about the same representative size as your front sight. So it gives you a pretty good reference for aiming at the representative distance. To further illustrate the example, I have an SR3 on my left, your right, and an SR3 center overlaid on an E-type silhouette. Silhouette targets, of course, have been used by militaries for decades now for training. Take a look at that SR3 bull. It's an 18-inch wide bull. Guess what? It's the same width as an E-type silhouette. So if you're capable of shooting expert rifle scores in a military context, you should have no problem holding the black on an SR3 target. It's the same distance, 300 yards or 300 meters. It's the same width as your front sight at that distance, 6 minutes, which also corresponds to the width of an E-type target at that same distance. So anyone claiming to be a competent rifle shooter in a military context no problem holding black or better on that SR3 target at that same distance. Now the other advantage of uh, conventional shooting, especially high power, is the con con idea of shooting sustained or rapid fire. In a military context, the advantage is obvious. You want to be able to shoot a series of shots accurately at some target at, at a distance. That's what the purpose of the 200 and 300 yard rapid fire portions of the National Match course represent. And we can see on the 300 course, you're shooting from prone, you're given 60 sec 70 seconds for a 10 round string to include getting into position and a reload uh, and firing 10 shots in a sustained fashion. Notice that that corresponds to what your sustained rate of fire should be for delivering suppressive fire. If you read through uh, FM, current Army doctrine and Marine Corps doctrine, they're wanting you to shoot about a shot every two seconds or so and then given time to perform a reload and all that you'll see that this range exercise on the bullseye target at two and three hundred yards corresponds to what you should be able to do for suppressive fire in a military context as well. 
The last rifle target we're going to take a look at today is the MR target, which stands for medium range. It is shot at 600 yards in conventional national match course competition. Uh, once again, the, t the bull on this target is 36 inches wide, which at 600 yards is, again, six minutes of angle. So you see that consistency. It provides a consistent aiming reference or mark for the shooter at the representative distance. 600 yards also corresponds to the effective range to what a designated marksman is supposed to be able to accomplish. Uh, as published by people like Colonel David Luanig, the idea of taking back the rifleman's quarter mile. You need to have a shooter capable of addressing wind, weather, and environmental conditions and effectively engaging point targets with a rifle out to extended, tar extended ranges, about a quarter mile or so. That's what this target teaches you. You're shooting at that kind of a distance with a nice clean front sight width uh, aiming reference out at the distances that will allow you to also be an effective rifleman, a designated marksman. So national match course shooting takes all the elements of basic position shooting, shooting at the mark, slow fire fundamentals, rapid fire or sustained fire fundamentals for suppressive fire and designated marksman shooting all wrapped up into one. To further illustrate the example, I've overlaid a white E-type silhouette on an MR competition target. Once again, the MR target being shot at 600 yards. You can see that this target is actually narrower. The MR aiming reference is narrower than two E-type silhouettes lay side to side. Now consider the advantages of this. Double echo targets such as this are what's typically shot on a machine gun range uh, out to 400 to 800 meters. And that's with a machine gun, crew serve weapon, shooting typically on that course of fire a seven round burst. In conventional competition, you're using an aiming reference six minutes wide, which is narrower than two double echo targets put side by side, so you're effectively getting some of the engagement distance a machine gunner is expected to get with a rifleman shooting slow fire single shots at that range. So not only is it teaching the rifleman to be a designated marksman and developing his or her capability of shooting at those extended ranges, you're having an aiming reference that also corresponds to what a machine gun or crew serve position would be at that representative distance. Anyone that can even hold the black at 600 yards on this MR target is going to be able to effectively engage a crew surf position out to that distance of 600 yards. Now consider this. All these targets I've showed you have scoring rings inside them. Any good high power shooter is going to tell you if all you're doing is holding black, you're not winning anything. You're going to be at the bottom of the running. You're expected to do much better than that. So it's pushing, it's helping the shooter push that envelope. You're not merely trying to get minute of barn door accuracy. That's your start point, that's your aiming reference, but what you're really trying to do is develop a level of accuracy beyond that. What can the rifle do, what can the shooter do? Now let's take a look at conventional pistol targets. Again, the concept is identical. You have a mark to aim at, it's a round bowl, so it's always right side up. It has a series of concentric scoring rings as well. The only difference is we've scaled it to be representative of the firearm and the distances we're engaging. This is a B6 target, which is used for conventional pistol shooting at 50 yards for the slow fire phase. Now, let's look at some of the um, numbers there. Max effective range for handguns, 50 yards, 50 meters, give or take. 50 yard target, hey, we're within the listed effective maximum range of a handgun still. The scoring ring has a maximum value of five points. It's 18 inches wide. Guess how wide the E-type silhouette is again? 18 inches. So if you can have a scorable hit, you will hit a sil an E-type silhouette. So again, not arbitrary game here. Interestingly enough, the Marine Corps uses the B8 target, which is the 25 yard version of this. Same exact size scoring rings, except the aiming black is slightly smaller for the smaller distance. That's their official qualification target. They take a bullseye target, overlay it on an E-type, similar to what I have pictured here. That's the U.S. Marine Corps qual target for pistol. I would argue the Marine Corps is fairly savvy on their tactics, so if that's what they're using for qualification, there might be a little merit to that. Also note at the aiming black itself, once again, the aiming black is a representative uh, 
size of what your apparent front sight width will be at those distances. So 50 yards, it's an eight inch wide target. It's going to appear about the same width as your front sight at that range. 25 yards uses just the nine ring, which is about five and a half inches wide, about apparent width of your front sight at that distance as well. Eight inch center, or eight inch black rather, that is also the exact same size as an IDPA minus zero or center. So in other words, a perfect shot on an IDPA target is the exact same size as the aiming black on this 50 yard target. It's also the same size as the eight ring on the 25 yard. So again, not an arbitrary setup here. If you're holding the black, you're holding center of chest hits. And if you're holding the scoring rings, you're still getting solid hits on a silhouette somewhere. And that would trans just like, uh, it's not an arbitrary game for rifle, same thing here for pistol. So something to consider, bullseye certainly has value. Uh, it is the genesis of marksmanship as we know it. And at least in the instructor community, a good instructor needs to be able to shoot. And these are good courses to learn on.